Okay, and we're going to give it just a minute or two here, like I usually do, just to let people see the live stream. This is an unannounced live stream. Um, I was actually going to be going to out and doing some sermons today, and I did not get the time to do that. I thought, well, I just I need to. There's a few things I need to answer here. I'm going to be doing it as a quick live stream. So I'll just wait till some people. Hi, brother Anthony. Wait till a few, couple of people come along here, and then we'll get started. Where in the Bible does it say KJV only? <laughs> uh, it doesn't. Uh, but so I should use the Bible to prove the Bible is not really. You're trying to use the Bible to prove the Bible is not really the final authority. Yeah, no, whatever. Um, yeah. So um, the Bible says that we're supposed to have you know, a more sure word of prophecy. King James Bible is more sure word of prophecy. Uh, we're supposed to have a Bible that does not add to or take away from uh, the scriptures. The new versions take away from what was there with the received text. So there's a whole lot of reasons I could get into on the whole thing of the Bible being the word of God. King James Bible being the word of God. So everybody else tune it in here. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Very true, Anthony. Uh, the King James Bible is the pure word of God. So, okay, we're going to get right to this thing here. Um, one of my viewers let me know about this that Eric Phelps said a few days ago. Uh, I listened to the whole thing, and what he's basically trying to say is politically, we need to join together. Um, hold on a second. Let me just grab something quick here. Uh, there are times throughout church history where people join together that might have considered each other heretics and whatever else to fight a common enemy, namely you know, the Catholics or the Jesuits or whatever else. And that we can, you know, we need to put aside our differences to fight this great evil of Jesuitism, which, you know, anybody that's watched my ministry for a while knows that I'm very much opposed to the Jesuit order. Um, but right here, I'm working on sermon notes. I won't bother showing them right now. I'm going to be doing a sermon on this issue of should Christians unite with the lost against a common enemy. All right. And, um, but Phelps calls me out in this study that he did here, this, you know, uh, more like a rant and everything else. And, um, I'll be making some statements throughout it, um, so let's listen to the audio here. He's talking about the thing of fascism and communism and how the Nazis used both and the Jesuits were behind the Nazis, which is absolutely true. No problem there. Uh, Eric Phelps, um, out of all people, all the different professing Christians out there and things, I would say he knows the Jesuit issue better than anybody. Um, and I've learned from him. Okay, so I'll say that. Communist American Empire. It's fascist and it's communist. Okay. Finances, fascism, and communism. Remember, Hitler was financed just like Stalin was by Washington. Hitler was a Mason just like Joseph Stalin was a Freemason, all working for the Jesuit power for the destruction of certain targeted populations, the Lutherans of Prussia and the Orthodox men of Russia. And so, in concluding my message, I call for certain men to unite in resisting the Jesuit political power, even though we differ doctrinally, and even though I consider some of you heretics, it doesn't matter. If you unite, if we all unite to resist the Jesuit power, although we have our differences, then the Lord will bless us for that. Okay, let me just stop right there just to kind of say a few things first of all this is eon paisley here that you're seeing on the screen and this guy i think is a catholic or something and eon paisley right later on in his life he made some agreements with catholics and whatever else really a shame because he was once very anti-catholic from northern ireland if you don't know who eon paisley is but i understand the thing of 
in this life, there are certain things we have to do that pertain to the world and whatever else. And certainly uh, Christians can just be, you know, we can be led as sheep to the slaughter, be killed off, whatever else, not get involved in politics, just let them throw us to the lions, so to speak. Or you can say, okay, I'm going to stand up against certain evils and things. But the problem is when you do that, you start to have to compromise to get in with other groups because Bible-believing Christian, Christians are always a minority. So in order to overthrow the Jesuits, you have to start to side with other people that aren't Bible believers. And there is some wisdom to that. I, I'm not going to say just absolutely not um, terrible, bad idea. I understand what, what the argument is here. But just let me continue. Yeah, because it's resisting evil unto blood, striving against sin. Resisting the Jesuit doctrine and their political power of controlling America. And so I call for this, and I'm probably going to get denounced by a certain of my brethren for this, but I'm going to do it anyway. I call for Brian Denlinger to unite in resisting the Jesuit power rather than attacking me and calling me a heretic. Why don't you just unite with me in resisting the Jesuit power, Brian? And then, then he goes off to a couple of other guys, uh, Chris Pinto and um, Harrison Katz and a couple other guys. Harrison Katz used to be on his 24-7 um, radio thing. But um, my answer to this, Eric, is uh, very simply that I am going to fight against the Jesuits in whatever ways I can. Um, so it's not really a thing of joining with you. I already am there. I'm already getting you know, made fun of because of my stands against the Jesuits and things that's been going on for years. I'll be showing a Jesuit coming up here, <laughs> a couple of Jesuits, uh, kicking them constantly. So I already am fighting. Um, and as far as joining with you, well, I'm not going to join with you in the sense of, you know, yoking up with your ministry or whatever else. I'm not doing that. If somebody wants to learn about the Jesuits, uh, you know, I will freely say Eric Phelps, his material that he brought out is good. But I don't agree with you, Eric, on a number of things. Um, I don't. And I consider you to be a heretic in a couple of different areas. And that's I'm not going to lie about it. Uh, so I'm not going to be able to join um, up with you. Now, I'm not going to spend my whole life tearing you down. That's the whole point here. Um, Sam Gipp is a guy that I am not going to join with him. But his books are very good on the Bible version issue. So somebody says, hey, I'd like to, to, you know, get a good book on the Bible version issue. Hey, Sam Gibbs books, the answer book is the first book that I had on the Bible version issue. Fine. I've said some thing, things against Sam Gipp. I've come out against some of the stuff that he's taught that was very heretical and done. I don't need to spend my whole life obsessively going after the guy. I don't. Um, I don't see him as a real big danger, as a real big threat. I don't see you, Eric, as a really big danger, a really big threat to the Bible-believing movement. Uh, Stephen Anderson, very big threat because he was getting mainstream media attention. I knew what they were doing with him. Um, I do believe that Stephen Anderson was a Jesuit temporal co-juder. Absolutely. You, you, you know, Eric said it as well. Uh, we talked about it. I had an old interview that I did with Eric Phelps. It was on my channel for a while. I pulled it because of some of the disagreements that we had. Fine. But I will stand against the Jesuit order, and I will do what I can to try to preserve some sort of liberty and freedom here. And I'm not going to get into all of the different uh, scriptures and whatever else to talk about the thing of yoking up with unbelievers and whatever. We'll go into that in the future study. Um, on this issue. But uh, it just, I understand where, what Eric's trying to say by this whole thing, but um, we'll zip forward here a little bit because the one that sent me this, the viewer that sent me this was saying, I'm a little bit confused what he's saying here. Let's see if I can zip forward here a little bit. I'll play a little bit more. Ears. No one. How do I know? Because I've read 90% of them. And I wrote it for the purpose of arming you to resist the Jesuit political power that's bringing this place down. And by the way, Chris Pinto is coming out with a new uh, DVD on the Jesuit power. He says it's going to be the best thing ever written. And I said, I hope it is. I hope, really pray it is. <laughs> Death to the Jesuit order by a thousand cuts. Amen. So I recommend you get it. 
pre-order it. He'll take your order. And when he's done with it, he'll send it to you. So another one, William Cooper. William Cooper, I regard as the best alternative speaker and historian on resisting the quote unquote new world order because he attributes all to the Jesuit order. And he puts the Jesuit oath in his book, Behold a Pale Horse. He put it in there. And so they killed him because William Cooper was not a saved man. You cannot really resist the Jesuit order over time unless you're saved and have the protection of the risen Son of God. Because they will kill you. They will do everything they can to neutralize your message. And another one, Gunu doing a great job. His name is Dr. Brian Artis. Dr. Brian Artis rightfully exposed the whole Jesuit jab and everything that's going down is snake venom. And he's absolutely right. The Vatican has that building with a great big cobra snake head in the interior there. The greatest snakes of all. The Jesuits run the Jesuit papacy. We have to unite with these kinds of people. They may be Roman Catholics. They may be heretics. They may be infidels. They may be Muslims. They may be Buddhists. They may be Hindus. But we better do one thing. We better unite together against the Jesuit power or it's over for America and Canada and the rest of Western civilization. And if you want to see what that means, you just study the Pope's Dark Ages for a thousand years. It's already the Dark Ages in China under communism. And by the way, the whole communist host has been built by the Jesuits running Washington and controlling all the big uh, military industrial complex Companies like Lockheed Martin and others giving this technology to Red China so we can attack the, the Taiwan that's full of Protestants, so we can attack Korea that's full of Protestants. Oh. So then he goes off on it. I mean, the guy knows his history about the Jesuits, no question about it. But, you know, the, the problem I have is their spiritual power when it comes to Bible believing Christians. And he, Eric just said about that bill cooper william cooper uh behold a pale horse and have his book right over there and uh some really good information again you know charity rejoiceth in the truth first corinthians chapter 13 talks about that i have charity for people i rejoice when i hear truth coming out no matter if it's from somebody so i get that angle to it but the whole point is bill cooper didn't stop anything because he was not a saved man Let's join with the Catholics. Let's join with the Buddhists. Let's join with the Muslims to fight the Jesuits. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, the only thing I can see in Scripture that lines up with that would be where Paul is there, and he's with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and he says, "Of the hope of the resurrection, I'm brought here today," you know, and he causes contention between them. That is something that I do. I like to remind Roman Catholics that the Jesuit order is using your whole church system as a political tool. And there's some very evil Jesuits out there, and you would do very well to banish the Jesuit order. So, you know, that's where I see a thing of, okay, you can say some things there. But to say I'm going to yoke up with these people and let's all, you know, here come the Jesuits, we'll say, an army of Jesuits. And let's call the Roman Catholic, this guy, and this, let's get the Muslim over here and whatever. Let's, let's join arms and come together against the common enemy. Good oh, man. That's a bad idea. That's a very bad idea. Um, so, uh, no thank you. Um, so to, to answer Eric Phelps, you called me out. Thank you for having enough guts to actually mention my name. Most people don't. Um, you know, I'll join with you in the sense of fighting against the Jesuits. Yes. I will tell people, if you're looking for information on the Jesuit order, um, Eric Phelps, his book is the best in out there it's not really in print it's on you know a cd or whatever um you know fine but to yoke up with you in terms of my ministry working along with you or no i'm not doing that um so that's an answer to that okay on to the next subject the issue of this uh i saw this video a few days ago it came out 2.7 million views, and it's about the rapture. He makes one good point and then totally blows it on something else, showing that the guy's a total fraud. I have a comment, you know, right there is my comment uh, where they actually absolutely lied. So let's listen to this here really quickly. When the rapture occurs, the world will capture the moment. Cell phones, 
security cameras, law enforcement body cams, doorbell cams, and more will all bear video record of the great disappearance. The world will reel with concern from watching the strange, mind-boggling and unbelievable video footage that goes viral across the globe. Okay, um, now that's a good point. Uh, there's more video cameras out there and everything else uh, to catch the catching up. But where he blows it here is he you'll listen here and it gets through the video and it says billions will disappear with a B. <laughs> billions. Uh, the only way that that would be possible is for the Roman Catholic Church to be included into that. So then, you know, I mean, there's not billions of, of Bible believing Christians on this earth right now. Uh, thousands, you know, um, but you look at the book of Revelation and it talks about there's, you know, 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. And I believe it's a reference to resurrected saints. They're, they're called angels in the resurrection. They neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. You know, Jesus said about. So. Um, let's continue here. We'll hear him say about billions. People vanish before their eyes and all caught on camera. This event won't be science fiction, conspiracy theory, or mindless speculation. When Christ comes for his people, it will be in the twinkling of an eye. Between the resurrected dead and the rapture, billions of people will exit this planet in an instant. Okay, between the resurrected dead and the rapture, billions of people. It's still, it can't be billions. That's a lie. So I'll just stop it there. But I have here, billions will disappear. Absolute lie. Revelation 5.11 lists the number of angels is less than 200 million, which would include all saved Christians. Matthew chapter 22, verse 30, we're talking about in the resurrection, you know, that they're as the angels of God. Since the first century, Jesus Christ said that the road to heaven is narrow and that few there be that find it in Matthew 7.14. Yes, the catching up will happen in the future, but it will be a very small number that leaves. Luke 18, verse 8 says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. King James Bible, please watch my sermon called The Marks of a False Convert. Uh, and of course, I realize that this is ultimately Luke 18, verse 8 is talking about the second coming when the Son of Man cometh. Son of Man reference to the messianic prophecy of Jesus Christ ruling as uh you know on the throne of david for the thousand year kingdom but the whole point is uh that's so important to get with this whole thing people are waiting you know and you go down through the comments and it's you know i'm ready uh is um uh, lord make me ready the lord has nothing for me i'm you know take me home i'm ready to go hallelujah it's can't wait it's just all positive 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 can't wait let's go i can't wait to go um there are some things that have to happen on the earth yet, okay, before we go home, right? And to say, well, I think it's going to be the September, which is kind of funny because it's the uh, 26th right now. And I did that video a little while ago of, of uh, you know, the thing of, let me see if I can find that really quickly, the September 23rd thing and all this stuff. Oh, you know, Faker Breaker and Gene Kim and a bunch of other fakes were coming out and saying that, you know, the rapture is going to happen on the 23rd. It could be this year, you know, on the Feast of Trumpets and whatever else. Um, yeah, there it is. Let me get this video here real, real quickly. Here's the video. Is the rapture. Is the rapture going to happen in September? And I did this two months ago. Um, and, you know, people go, I'm not even going to go down and look for one, but uh, I got a couple of people that just got really angry at me, rebuked me very harshly and everything, you know, how dare you? It, it looks like it's going to happen. Well, it didn't happen. Uh, whenever you have somebody coming out and saying, you know, oh, we know for sure that it's going to happen and whatever. Um, Again, people are just looking for ways to get out of their problems. You know, most of them are probably drowning in debt that they can't pay. And they're thinking, oh, the rapture will happen and I could get to leave. You know, I get my bailout from the rapture. Um, 
No, it isn't. And let me, I saw this guy here. Let me just put this up. Rapture is a new doctrine and a false one propagated by the Seventh day Adventism. Um, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. Uh, you need to study the issue a lot more than that. Uh, again, I can't go into all the different things and all the different scriptures. I've spent hundreds of hours on the issue. It's not a new doctrine. Okay, you've been lied to. It's the resurrection of the dead in Christ and the living going up together. Um, it happens before the time of Jacob's trouble gets started. That Christians go up and they're there in heaven before the Antichrist is unleashed. Okay, I've done a huge amount of studies on it. Um, so, yeah, okay. Uh, there you go. You get to be the time out there using profanity in the comments. So, David Jeremiah, yeah, a faker. And another faker who's connected to the Jesuits. Um, again, one of you let me know about this, that uh, Helvin, there's some atheist, you know, fool, and uh, he's making a video about Helvin, and, and here's Helvin and his newest wife. Um, I don't even know, is that number, uh, what, three or four or five? I, I really don't know. Um, so, uh, you know, no idea. But I find it interesting that I, we did a video on Hovind showing that he basically took a vow of poverty, which is a Jesuit thing. And he said that the purpose of his ministry is ecumenical na in nature, which is also Jesuit. And he did it for the, the glory of God and all this stuff. Jesuit motto, ad majorem de glorium, for the greater glory of God. Um, and this guy here, Forbes writer, Peter J. Riley, uh, talks about Ken Hovind and his different marriages. Uh, who is Peter J. Riley? Well, we brought him up in this study here seven years ago, um, showing that Peter Riley is a PhD educated Jesuit. I forget which one of it, what school he went to, but it was a Jesuit school. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I guess that will be it here for what I was going to show. Um, but, you know, I, I just want to say this. I think really what Hovind is doing, what his purpose is at this point in time, you know, going through all these different women, we're not dealing with the man of God here. We're dealing with a scammer. And, you know, these atheists, they just, they eat this stuff up and they just, they obsessively watch all of Ken Hovind's stuff and, and point out such, you know, that he's such a hypocrite. And they don't even realize that this is all part of the plan. You know, see, bring out fake Christians to get them to hyper-focus on and say, oh, look, he's a hypocrite, he's a hypocrite. That's why I reject Christianity. <laughs> Stupid. Very foolish. So that's about all I'm going to say about that. So. Uh, no, you're wrong again. Uh, when Jesus Christ is talking about the wicked being taken to judgment, he's talking about the battle of Armageddon. Again, you don't understand scripture here. I've gone over this stuff, you know, in many studies, but you want to get into the comments of one of my live streams and say, the rapture is unbiblical. You haven't studied it. All right. Um, can you please answer my question? I, I think you answered, asked a question, something about a Bible in Italian or something like that. I'm not sure what that would be. Uh, honestly, I don't know. But there's this this mindset that people um, there's this mindset that people say I have to have a Bible in my own language. Uh, no, God had the Old Testament Hebrew, New Testament Greek, whole Bible in English, I believe. Studied for over 15 years, so you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, okay, honey. Uh, sure, right. Uh, whatever. Then you get to stay on the earth, stupid, in the time of Jacob's trouble. What is the point of the body of Christ going into a time where you could lose your salvation? Okay, let me ask you a question. Put it in the comments over here, Smarty. Do you believe that you have eternal security, or do you have to maintain your salvation? Okay, go ahead.
put it in there. I'll put your comment up. Do you believe that you can lose your salvation there a vertical view? Can you lose your salvation? Do you believe that you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise unto the day of redemption? This is the easiest way to nail a postie. You're a five-point Calvinist. <laughs> your problems are just, uh, <laughs> just beginning. So God creates people for hell, and they can't get out of it. Okay. Answer the question. It's just that simple. Do you believe that you can lose your salvation? <sighs> All right. Let me just show you here to people out there that are being deceived by this uh, nonsense here um, of these of a postie. Uh, let's see here. Okay. So by this, put your comment up. You believe that you cannot lose your salvation. Absolutely not. Is that what you're saying? You can't lose your salvation. Because I need to make this very clear. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise till the day of redemption. You can't lose your salvation. Okay. Only Catholics believe you can lose your salvation. All right. Then let's go to Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 through 11. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. All right. And you can go down in through verse 11 and verse 12 there. Here's the patience and the faith of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Another issue for you. But uh, what happens if a Christian that's sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise goes into the time and takes the mark of the beast? Will they lose their salvation? Put it in the comments. Those who are saved cannot take the mark. <laughs> Yet you're such a stupid punk. Okay, sorry, buddy, but you're such such a stupid punk. I've dealt with this stuff before. So in other words, okay, give you this one. You just you know it so well, don't you? First Timothy chapter five. All right, verse eight. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. How can you provide for your own without taking the mark of the beast? No man might buy or sell unless he has the mark. What do you do? How are you going to have a job? How are you going to pay your bills? Hmm? A Christian cannot take the mark of the beast. Then how do they provide for their family? How do they provide for their own? And don't give me this little prepper thing of, oh, well, I don't make all my food. I don't raise all my food now, but I will in the time of Jacob's trouble. We'll just raise all of our own food. What you're doing right now is wicked. No, what you are doing is you are teaching, trying to, to bring false doctrine in here and mess with people. Oh, you know the Bible so well and everything else. If you're a postie, you're lost. Very simple. Well, you've studied for 15 years and whatever else. Can't help you. Oops, missed one. All right, I understand what you are saying, but calling him a stupid punk is not a nice way to explain your point to him. Um, let me explain some things here, okay? Um, 
the Lord called me into ministry. And I've been in this thing for a long time. And I have dealt with literally thousands of post-tribbers. And they always do the same things. They go to Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, Luke 21. Try to apply it to a Christian today. It doesn't work. They all do the same thing. We have to endure to the end. We have to try to suffer and get our way. It, it's all workspace salvation. They're so confused. And then they try to bring in and sow discord. I'm not even talking about the rapture issue in terms of pre-trib versus post-trib or, post or whatever. I showed a video by this David Jeremiah guy trying to just say, oh, look at this. And into the comments, start attacking. So gloves off, gloves come off when that happens. There's not going to be any respect for somebody like that. Okay. I have none for someone. And, it's, and I've done so many hours of research into this whole thing. It just drives me nuts. So, oh, you're post-millennial. Well, then you really are, you know, an idiot. So Jesus doesn't come back. Man brings in the thousand-year kingdom. Get saved, okay? All right? You're going bye-bye now. It's been, uh, it's been fun, but uh, see you later, heretic. Um, why? Why do you have to come here and start being disrespectful and coming in trying to mess with people and, you know, whatever? Brother Brian, why do you believe in the pre-trib rapture? That's an appropriate way to say it. I'll be very gentle. But you see... When somebody comes along and they're a heretic, you treat them like a heretic. They're there just to sow discord and make problems. That's why I'm nasty with somebody like that. All right. No, we're not post millennial. Sorry. Um, yeah. So, anyhow. Um, I can do some questions and answers, I guess, really quickly. If anybody has a question, just type question and then behind that. I'm sorry if I've missed things. I can't stand post rivers. I mean, you know, it's insanity. The, there are so many arguments for the catching up being before the time of Jacob's trouble. I mean, there's just. Yes. Um. Excuse me. Brian, is it wrong to sue a non-believer at court? I feel like it's wrong since that would be taking revenge. Would it be better to suffer? That depends on the issue. I can't I can't answer that question. I don't know what it is. Did they come and break your, uh, you know, try to hurt your home or doing something like that? Or yeah, I don't know. I, it would depend on the situation. Question. Who is the angel with the little book? Um, I don't know. Just one of the angels. There's different theories that you could come up with on that. Um, question. Can we discuss post-millennial reign, the time we are in now? <laughs> We're in the millennial kingdom, brethren. Yeah, okay. Uh, Satan's bound in the bottomless pit. We're getting along with animals. You know, wars cease. They beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Yes, sir. We're there now. Uh, uh, the Calvinist is essentially saying that Christ died for no man. Well, partly it's just he died for the elect and the other people. No, he didn't die for them. You know, he takes them up to heaven and says, depart from me, curse in an everlasting fire, you know, and. Well, they say, well, sure, you know, I was forced into this. It's crazy. Any updates on the shirts, hats? I thought something with a video camera and a KJV Bible would be great for the picture. Um, basically where it's at right now, uh, I will show this. Um, at the website, um, my webmaster, brother that's taking care of this. 
he put in all of these new categories here that you can see and he's trying to get I have a huge list of videos for him to get put into this and you know get the whole thing listed and all that stuff so um that's taking a long time he's working on a logo for me i'm waiting for the logo i have a brother and sister that want to do the hats and t-shirts for me they have a website already set up you know for that does that stuff i'm saying and so they're going to be trying to do that but i want to wait till he gets the logo for me so we're kind of waiting on that right now um he's got a lot to do he does you know builds websites for other people too so you know i'm patient with it i did actually build make a hat and it was supposed to be here yesterday i think it might be here today i sent my wife and son over uh to see if it's here so um if it's here i'll be wearing it in upcoming walk and talk videos so i will you know it's in process uh question thoughts on bill cooper's book um some some good information but um you have to be careful when you get into that stuff if you know he's not a saved man and so some of the information is a little bit i don't know on that um question have you seen truth is christ channel where he goes into the kjb and shows the 777s and the numerology in the bible uh no i haven't uh, there is a biblical system of numbers but you know i don't i haven't done a whole lot on that um question what are your thoughts on jack hibbs uh not sure who jack hibbs is sorry um bumper stickers too please okay um what's your biggest issue with phelps teachings well, he's come out with some really weird stuff. He said that Ruckman was a Jesuit temporal coadjutor because of Ruckman's stands that the King James Bible's inspired, which King, which Ruckman didn't actually teach. Ruckman taught that the King James Bible is preserved without proven error. Yeah, and you get into this really weird thing with the Bible version issue. And is it inspired? Yes, it is. Well, it's it's double. Is it double inspired? Has it been re-inspired in sixteen? You get into all this weird stuff. So, Ruckman took kind of a weak stand. I just teach the King James Bible is God's perfect word. Whatever else you want to say about it, I believe it's God's book. Um, so Phelps has been wishy-washy on the Bible version issue. One minute it's, well, it's not the King James Bible. It's perfect. It's the received text or something. So there's that. Phelps is a militant Trinitarian. Phelps is a flat earther, which I am not. And he makes a big issue about it. Somebody wants to believe flat earth, whatever. I don't care. But when you start to call other people's salvation into question, we have problems. Um, you know, there's, uh, I've heard some things about Phelps as his first book was published by new agers and things. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't get into some of that stuff. Phelps is also a, a Calvinist. I'm not a Calvinist. So, um, there's some issues there. And, you know, again, let me just explain something. I, why I go, I really slam, um, heretics down very quickly because you can't give them subjection. Um, not for an hour, because what they do is they will just go and they just take you on this loop and they'll go and they'll, they'll argue here and then they'll go to there and then they'll go to here and then they'll go to there. And they just take you in circles is what they do. I've dealt with this stuff for years. And if you can't get somebody really quickly to say, yeah, OK, that's true. or but, OK, we're done. We're done. Um, so. Okay, here, more clarification on this. The situation is my Muslim manager at work has been discriminating against me because of Christianity, and I defended the Lord Jesus. Since then, he has been grossly mistreating me. I can get him fired. Well, if you know, if you can go, if he's just a sort of a lower level manager and you can go above him and just say, hey, he's you know, pushing me around here, religious discrimination, there's nothing wrong with that. You're only in scripture, you're not supposed to sow, uh, sue brethren, but lost people certainly you can go after them i wouldn't sue them trying to get money from them or something but if you're just trying to report that the guy's mistreating you and discriminating absolutely do that so
Question, when a Jew gets saved, is why would it be okay for him to eat pork? Thank you. Well, in the book of Galatians, you have Peter, and he's living after the manner of the Gentiles. And Paul rebukes him because when other Jews come, then he withdraws, and he's standing over with the Jews. And Paul says, you know, if you're living after the manner of the Gentiles, um, why are you commanding them to try to act like they're Jews? You know, and so um, Peter, when he's there and he sees uh, the the Lord lets down the like that curtain thing in the book of Acts, and he says, Arise, Peter, kill and eat. And he says, you know, not so, Lord, nothing unclean has ever you know, come into my mouth. And he says, What I have cleansed, that call not thou common. So the Lord basically said to him, literally, you can go and you can eat pork if you want to. Um, now I believe uh I believe that, you know, as far as different people have different dietary needs and whatever else, depending on the climate where they're at. And so I would say to a Jew that gets saved, I would simply say, you probably don't want to eat pork. Probably not really good because you're more of a Mediterranean type of people and whatever. Um, Northern Europeans, Germans, especially like me, pork is a good thing. Okay. Matthew 16, 28, read that aloud and explain it. Well, if we're going with one verse, I might have to read context. <clears throat> and we're doctrinally in the Old Testament here, so you have to be careful. Uh, Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Okay, John. Did John die? Some people say, yes, he did. Well, I don't see any scripture for that. I saw he goes up to heaven he's called up in revelation chapter four and there's no mention of him dying now there's you know church historians and whatever that they'll say well no he came back down and he died or whatever uh i don't see any scripture for that so what jesus is saying there is not that the kingdom came in because again see you have to think about your statements that you make if the kingdom came in in the first century how can a thousand year kingdom last for two thousand years Okay, did Jesus rule and reign till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom? When did that happen? So you have to make it symbolic. That's the problem with what you're thinking there. This amillennial thing, it's it's not really post-millennial, it's amillennial is what you're talking about, that there is no millennial kingdom. There, I mean, it's a thousand years. Um, you know, when you read about Revelation chapter 20, they lived and reigned with Christ for 1,000 years. Well, it doesn't really mean 1,000 years. It's just symbol symbolizing a time uh, that where, you know, it's just all symbolic. Uh, I don't fall for that stuff. Okay. Um, oops. Wait a second here. This one. Jesus came in his kingdom before they all died. That's not what it says. You can't read English here. My friend, it says, uh, till they, um, there be some standing here, not all. He didn't say all of his disciples. Uh, learn to read English, okay? Um, question. I still have to read your book, but for the Godhead doctrine, is it believed that Jesus, the Son of God, the body of God, ceased to, to exist for three days and nights? No, he didn't cease to exist. He died. He was buried. But his flesh didn't see corruption. So, <laughs> oh boy. So will Elijah and John be the two witnesses in Revelation 11? No, it's Moses and Elijah. Not even close. Well, you got Elijah. I was thinking Enoch. Some people try to say Enoch. Um, so. Okay. <sighs> so good. I'm glad that, that helped. Uh, thoughts on Joel Osteen, <laughs> uh, minister of Satan, hireling, 
Devil possessed. Uh, I could go on. No good. Yeah, it goes to meet with the Pope. Yeah. I did a sermon years ago, an audio sermon called Your Worst Life Now. Not your best life now. This is not my best life. My best life is in heaven. Anybody that would write a book, you know, like that, you know, your best life right now. Eh, I don't think so. Um, is it wrong to wear crosses? No. As long as you don't bow down and worship them, no, it's not wrong to wear a cross. So, you know, Lord doesn't care what you're doing. The only, Lord only cares why you are doing it. Um, wow. Um, brother, can you please pray for me and my family? Wife is with child now, our fourth in four years. Thanks for all you do. Yeah. Um, I certainly will pray for you. Um, <laughs> Joyce, Joyce Myers, I know who you mean. Looks like the Joker. Yes, she does. She's got that, you know, that weird smiley thing. You know, yeah. I can't do it, but yeah. Question, can you tell if you've been given over to a reprobate mind? Um, well, I'll give you the scripture on that. Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not that know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. Um, the way that you can know that you're saved is by understanding that Jesus Christ is in you, and that you can feel that there's a struggle against the sin in your life. Romans chapter 7, Paul talks about that, that there's a, a struggle between his flesh and the spirit. So if you feel that struggle um, and you can see that there's a change in your life and whatever else, uh, yeah, you're saved. I believe that. You know that you've called out to the Lord. You know the Lord saved you. You love the word of God. You, you know, you can see what happens if you don't read the word of God. You see that struggle between the flesh and the spirit. Um, yeah, right there. Thank you, sister, for putting that up. There it is. You can go watch that study. It answers it. Um, so, okay. Well, I need to get going here. I need. I just want to do a quick little live stream here. But um, understand, brethren, what the things that take me off. There's many years and lots of experience behind that. You know, situation. Somebody comes to me in a kind you know, way and, and they say, I appreciate the work you've done. Could you please clarify some points here? Let's talk about it gentlemanly with scripture. But if you come, it, it, you know, say it this way. You come to my door and you do a nice knock. Ring the doorbell. I don't have a doorbell here. I did, but it, it's broken. <laughs> um, don't feel like fixing it. Um, that's one thing. But you come here and you slam on my door and you try to kick my door in. I'm not going to be very nice when I come to the door. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. You come to me and you say, Brother, could you please explain these verses? I'm confused about it. I am not a pre-tribber, but I'm open to your opinions. Fine. You come to me and you say, It's a lie. Pre-trib's a lie. That's nonsense. Nobody's ever believed this. It's a, it's a false doctrine. We're ready to fight. Okay? And I'm not going to be nice to you. So, um, and by the way, thank you to everybody out there who subscribes. We're, we hit 50,000 subscribers finally, and it only took me, you know, what, however many years from 2008 till now, whatever that is, 15 years or something, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we got there finally with all the YouTube deleting of my videos and uh, deleting my subscribers and deleting my video views and everything else. They finally allowed me to hit 50,000. So uh, I guess it's going to be probably another 15 years till I hit 100,000. <laughs> so, um, and, you know, and I saw, you know, I saw somebody. Um, yeah, I, I consider the Q&As, you know, when I can. I see your comment. But, um, you know, uh, 
just totally forgot what I was going to say. Um, yeah, I don't think we'll be here for 15 more years yet. Uh, so, <laughs> but oh, I know what it was. Somebody said about don't let the you know fame change you or something. I, I'm too too much uh, a certain way, you know, whatever, like a tree. Uh, you're not going to bend me into the some kind of fame thing or something. <laughs> and the Lord will never allow that. Even if I wanted to, the Lord won't allow it. So um, I always try to be there for my subscribers. And, you know, even my enemies, you want to come, you want to be gentlemanly about it. But you start coming and saying you're a liar, you're this, you're that. I'm not going to be nice. Plain and simple. So that is going to be it. Um, we will see everybody in the future and um, have some sermons I need to do. Be some good ones coming out. A couple other walk and talk videos that I'll be coming out with. We're kind of redoing some things right now around here. We have a lot of things. Uh, I'll just say this just as a little bit of a side note, a little personal thing here. Um, we have a storage building on our property and I built it years ago, a long time ago. And we have our kind of our valuables kept there and whatever else um things that my wife's grandmother gave her and you know furniture and things like that and it's always been real secure really nice back there stays nice and dry i have it up it's built on a stone foundation dry laid stone so it doesn't get any kind of moisture problems um it's really good well i was back there a couple days ago and I went in to get something, I had to take something back and, you know, we'll store our, our winter clothes back there. And during the summer months, we'll store the summer during the winter. Yeah, it's, it's just a secure place that we can keep some of our personal belongings. And I'm back in there the other day and I hear this, you know, squeak, squeak, squeak. Like, what is that noise? It sounds almost like a batter or like a mouse or something. And turn around I looked up in the front one front corner and I see this mouse run up on the you know the roof rafters where they connect to the wall and it's up there running and I thought oh no mice got into this building and I don't know how they got in I went all around the building there's no holes there's no I don't know how they got in so I find I had to take care of the mice um and uh now we have that to deal with. So now we're thinking, oh, great. You know, we had to get, we kept our sleeping bags, bags back there when we would go camping, our, our tent when we used to go camping. And so now I have to get all that stuff out because the mouse destroyed a number of things. Um, my wife had some thread that was given to her by her grandmother, you know, some embroidery thread and things. And the mouse completely ruined that, chewed it up and things. Um, so it's just stuff like that. You know, you see I'm coming out with videos and lots of videos. And then all of a sudden I disappear for a few days and you say, I wonder what's going on. Other stuff comes up. We have, you know, uh, apples to pick and we have other things to do like that. So <laughs> just to throw that out there, um, take a cat. Well, we have a dog. It's a rat terrier and, and he actually uh, got rid of the mice. So um yeah so okay that will be it for the live stream and we'll see everybody in upcoming videos and um so uh please do keep us in your prayers and like i said the shirt thing the hat thing bumper stickers whatever else we will be coming out with those in the future um i'll let you know believe me. So uh, that will be it. Thank you for watching.